Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and in this video tutorial, we are stitching out some freestanding lace designs. Now, the supplies that we're going to need to stitch out these really cute freestanding lace embroidery designs are water soluble stabilizer to begin with, and I'm going to be using my Wash It Away Plus. Remember, I always have links in the description box below. If we have a look at it, this is the more fabric type of water soluble stabilizer. There's a different kind on the market also that looks more kind of like a, a clear plastic vinyl sheet that's completely see through. This is the fabric kind and this is what I prefer to use when I'm stitching out freestanding lace designs like this. Then you're going to need some thread. Now I like to wind a bobbin with the exact same thread that I'm using on the top because that way the design looks good from both sides, okay? Like you can see on these, pink on the top and pink in the bobbin. Then you're gonna need an embroidery machine and a hoop. I'm gonna be using my Baby Lock Spirit standalone embroidery machine for this video tutorial, and these are the two size hoops that it comes with. You typically wanna go with the smallest hoop uh, that will fit the project that you're working on. So this one is gonna be a little too big for what we need if we're just stitching out one freestanding lace design. Of course, if you know how to do it or your machine allows it, you can set it up so you can uh, stitch out multiples in one hoop if you're gonna be using a bigger hoop like this. For the purposes of this instructional video, we are just gonna be stitching out one of these designs, okay? So this is the hoop I'm gonna be using. I have my stabilizer and I'm gonna pick some thread to stitch out another one of these in. Now let's talk a little about choosing the thread that you're gonna to use to stitch out these lace designs. For a beginner, and that is who this video is geared towards, I would recommend either a rayon or your regular polyester machine embroidery thread for these to start off with. That's gonna work fine, especially for these little designs, which I digitize to be kind of just as decorative little pieces. You can use these in gift tags to hang them as little ornaments, hanging decorative pieces by a window, because you're gonna be able to see both the front and the back side. So you can hang these on a little mobile and have them spin around in the wind, whatever it is that you want them to be. They're just little decorative craft pieces, basically. If you are gonna be working on a larger design that you have that you want to be really drapey or a soft lace design that is maybe going to be used as an overlay on a garment or something, and it needs to be really soft and airy, then you're probably going to want to lean towards a rayon thread because uh, it's not a full-blown synthetic like the polyesters are, which are going to be stiffer and a little bit stronger, okay? So depending on the application, that will also help guide you uh, as to what fiber content in the thread that you want to use. Now, another thing that's going to affect how drapey or how stiff your finished design is, is actually how much of the water-soluble stabilizer you actually rinse out of your design. Here's one that was already stitched out, but you can see that I just trimmed around the water-soluble stabilizer. At this point, you would dunk it in some warm water to dissolve it. If you really spend your time kind of massaging this and getting rid of all the, the, the water-soluble stabilizer, because this was stitched out on a rayon thread, it's going to be a little bit softer and more pliable than one that maybe was stitched out either in a polyester thread or one that I just dunk a couple of times, remove kind of the excess and leave some of the stabilizer in there. If you're wanting a stiffer finished design, kind of like these, I didn't completely rinse out all this, the water soluble stabilizer because I still want them to have a little bit more body if they're gonna be used for something that kind of hangs like that, okay? Now another sample to show you is this little lace bookmark that I designed, and I will be sharing how to do this in a future video tutorial with you, but just so you can see, for a bookmark, I do want it to be a little bit stiffer because it's, first of all, longer, so it's easier for it to bend and fold up, but I also want it to be stiffer because it's gonna be handled quite a bit inside of a book by somebody who's actually using it, as opposed to being just a decorative piece like these, okay? So for this one, I did did go ahead and stitch it out um, using a polyester thread and I tried to leave some of the stabilizer in there next time I'll probably leave a little bit more because I still want it to be even stiffer than what it is right here now the next step is to prep our hoop with the water soluble stabilizer I'm using my wash it away plus here and this is the hoop the 5x7 hoop for my spirit embroidery machine I'm gonna lay it right here in front of me I've removed the inner hoop okay and then I just lay the stabilizer over this. I try to conserve. So I'm only gonna overlap it by a little bit, about half an inch to three quarters of an inch and kind of eyeball it here. And I'm gonna cut it right across this way, okay? And this is my eight inch roll of the Wash It Away Plus. And you can see that whether you have a four by four hoop or a five by seven like this one, it's plenty to use in the hoop. So now we lay the water soluble stabilizer over the outer hoop. 
And then this is the one time that I really like to tug on it because I want that stabilizer to be in there nice and snug. We lay the inner hoop. I typically will insert the inner hoop in the furthest corners away from me here and then work my fingers down to push it right into place. Okay, you don't want to have, and let me show you an example of something that you don't want to have. If the stabilizer is kind of floating in there, that really can hurt the integrity of the lace design because the lace, remember, the plan is to rinse away the, the water-soluble stabilizer. So these stitches that are actually holding the entire design up, they need to be locked into place. If the stabilizer is too loose and the machine is stitching along, when you rinse away what has stabilized it for stitching, you may get to the point where these stitches will start kind of loosening up and they will no longer be interlocked and the design can fall apart on you, believe it or not. So if this is loose, and I've kind of unscrewed here to make it nice and loose, and I put it in there like that, you can see how this is like almost baggy a little bit. You don't want that for freestanding lace, okay? I find that I get the best results when this is pretty snug to begin with. And I put it in on the furthest corners away from me. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And then push it in nice and tight. And at this point, because the stabilizer is going to get rinsed off, this is probably the only time that I would recommend tugging on your stabilizer like this. You want it to be super nice and taut. Otherwise, I mean, any tension issues in a lace design will affect the overall design once it's finished. Because you got to remember that there's not going to be any stabilizer, if, if little, if anything, if you keep it in there. So you can see how this is not baggy anymore. You see how it's nice and taut? That is how you want it to be for stitching out freestanding lace designs. Now I will note that you know how you saw me pulling on the stabilizer like this around the edges? If you're a beginner, do not do that to fabric when you're hooping your fabric because that is definitely gonna distort the grain uh, and the direction of the fabric and everything. You're just doing this for this specific uh, type of a project for a freestanding lace design because we want the foundation that the stitches are going to be stitched on to be nice and taut so that this is not a factor in producing some loose stitches after it's actually rinsed off. So we want it to be nice and taut so we know that we're creating a, a proper lace design in the end, okay? So we're just doing this to the water soluble stabilizer. But I can see that that is nice and taut and now we're ready to head over to the embroidery machine. So let me grab my thread. I'm gonna go with a Poly Neon Madeira machine embroidery thread. This is a polyester thread. And I'm just gonna grab an empty bobbin so that I can wind a bobbin with the same thread, grab my hoop, and head on over to my embroidery machine. Now I'm threading the machine regularly. When you get to the last bit before you thread the actual needle, this is one of my favorite features on this machine. Now you don't have to thread the needle yourself or with a little kind of push down automatic needle threader. Instead, it has an actual push button and the machine will thread itself. So here's the needle threading button and I'm just gonna press it and you'll see what it does. All right, so now we have thread, our needle is threaded, we have a fully wound bobbin in there with the same thread as we have on top, and we have our hoop that has one layer of my Wash It Away Plus in it. Now we just need to install the hoop in the machine, and this one happens to just slide in. Once it's all the way in the back, you just pull this down. And now we're ready to load up our design on the screen so we can stitch out the lace flower. Now here you can see my USB stick is already inserted into the machine. So I'm gonna hit right here, which is basically the universal icon for USB. And that tells me this is gonna pull up the memory that's on the attached drive. And now you look for your design here. You can scroll down or up. Mine is right there. I can see that that's the flower. Now you can see on screen here that this design has three different colors, it says, because this is giving you the option. If you did want to make it in multiple colors, again, I would still stick to the same recommendation I made earlier, which is to have a bobbin wound with the same thread that you're using on the top, but you can do that for the different areas, okay? But if, if you're just gonna be doing it in one color like I am, you can just go ahead and skip right through the color stops on your machine as it's going. So here we go. We have the design pulled up there. On this machine, I just hit the button that says embroidery. 
And one note that you really want to keep in mind is that when you're stitching out a freestanding lace embroidery design, you do not want to try to enlarge it or resize it, okay? Because remember I mentioned those stitches locking everything into place to create a standalone design, right? Once the stabilizer is rinsed off, you don't want those stitches to be too loose and have the design fall apart on you. So if the design was purchased and digitized to be that specific size, that's the size that you want to stitch it out at. It's showing us what's going to stitch out first in this window here, which is kind of like the back gridding that's going to make up the foundation of the remaining stitches. So once your hoop is installed and you're ready to start stitching, there's an important step that I don't want you to skip out on when you're doing specifically freestanding lace. And that is to bring the bobbin thread up before you start stitching. Remember, when we're working with lace, we want it to look just as pretty on one side as it does on the other. And if you're a quilter or you've watched any of my free motion quilting videos before, you know that I always have you bring the bobbin thread up so that you don't end up with any knots kind of on the back side of your quilt. And that is what we're gonna do here. Now when we load the embroidery hoop into the machine to begin the stitching the design, you can see that the needle position is right now in the center of the design and that is not necessarily where it's going to start stitching. So before we do the whole needle down and needle up to bring the bobbin thread up, we want to advance the design to the first stitch. And on my Baby Lock Spirit, let me use my stylus, which is what I should be using instead of my fingers, but... You're gonna go down here, this third button over, it has a needle and it has a minus slash a plus sign. And this is how you can move back stitches in the stitching of the design or forward stitches. So we're gonna click that and you'll see that you get all these different options pop up. You can go back by one design, up by one, or in increments of 10, 100, and 500. I just wanna to advance to the first stitch, so I'm just gonna go plus one to take me to the first stitch of the design. And when I hit that, you'll see that the positioning of the hoop on the machine will move itself to put the needle right where it needs to be to stitch out the first part of the design, which is probably gonna be somewhere up here, okay? So let me hit the button. And now that the needle is in the correct position to start stitching, at that first stitch position is where we want to bring up the bobbin thread. So I'm going to hold on to the top thread. And on this machine, you can hit the needle down once and it'll put the needle down into the stabilizer. And if you tap the button again, it will bring the bobbin thread up. So if you've watched any of my free motion quilting videos, you know that this is how we always start our quilting so that we don't end up with any thread tails showing or any knots or jumbled up mess on the back of our quilts. It's the same idea here for the freestanding lace. So we're gonna hold on to the top thread here, needle goes down, needle comes back up, and when I pull on this, I can see that it bought my bobbin thread up. You probably can't see it, but I'm gonna grab it here, just a little with some tweezers, my fingers, and grab some more of it. So now I have two thread tails, one that was from the top and one from the bobbin thread. So you wanna hold on to these, now you'll see that the, uh, the light here for the start stop button is still red. That's because the presser foot is up. So on this machine, we hit this button and it'll put the presser foot down. And you'll see that the light now turned green and that's giving us the green light that we can press the button so the machine can start stitching out the design. I typically will hold on to these threads for about six to seven stitches or so and then I will stop the machine so I can trim away the threads. We just don't want any of these thread tails to get sucked under and to show up on the back of your lace design, because remember the lace, you can see it on both sides. So you want it to be just as pretty on one side as it is on the other. So let's press start and just loosely hold on to these. Don't let them go. And that's enough for me right there. You'll see that this one thread is just caught through the presser foot, but you can just pull them both up. And now let me show you how I take my snips and I cut both of those thread tails. Now let me try to keep my hands out of the camera, but you can see where they both are. Remember, one of these was from the top, one was from the bobbin, so I know nothing is gonna get caught underneath, and I'm just gonna trim close to that edge of the stabilizer, and that's it. Now we can go back to pressing the start button and have the machine continue to stitch out the remainder of the design.
All right, so the design has finished stitching out the background grid. Now you can see that it's changed the image that it's gonna stitch out here, which is gonna be the satin stitch that goes all the way around, kind of concealing up those lace edges of the finished flower. So it stopped because I do have it digitized to be a different color in case you did want to use those options and have the edge, the edge stitching here, the satin stitch around all the edge in a different color. In that case, just make sure that you wind a bobbin with the same thread that you wanna use on top and the bottom, and then you know prep the machine just as you normally would and then press the start button again in my case we're just gonna stitch it on the same kind of gold yellowish color so I am just gonna put the presser foot back down and have the machine continue stitching Alright, so we're on to the last step of the design, which is just going to be that center fill right there. And again, the machine or the design stops because I have it set to a different color. So if you wanted to do the center circle part here in a different color, then this would be the time for you to remove the hoop, change the thread on the top and in the bobbin, and then resume the overall design. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it with the same color we have. So we're going to do the same thing we do. We grab the top thread. Put the presser foot down. I'm going to do needle up, needle down just to bring that bobbin thread up. Bring that presser foot up so I can grab it with my fingers. Presser foot down, take a couple stitches, then I'll trim and then I'll let it do its thing. That's good there. Pull these threads away. And just trim with your snips. I can't really see from this side, but I will trim. Oh, there we go. I can see the. There we go. I trimmed away the threads and then let it do its thing. So our design has finished stitching right now. So uh, the presser foot already comes up on this machine by itself. So I can remove the hoop by lifting this up, taking it out. And now let's head over to the work table so I can show you how to get the design out of here and how to rinse off the water soluble stabilizer. All right, so the little flower lace design has been stitched out. This is the top. And on the back side, you'll see that you'll have some thread tails. And these, I just want you to trim them. The design ties off at the beginning and at the ends. So that is fine there. Everything looks pretty good on the front and or on the front and on the back, I should say. Now to trim it out of here, I like to get rid of as much of the water soluble stabilizer by cutting than I do, you know, taking a big chunk of this and just like soaking all this stabilizer in water. I also prefer to trim it out of the hoop while it's in there because the stabilizer is nice and taut. So you don't run the risk of cutting into your design by mistake. I just tend to go like this and just you can cut around it closely. You can come in between those petals if you really wanted to, but it's all going to get rinsed off anyway. So just trim around close. All right. Now for the rest of this stabilizer, pop it out. I like to put them in a baggie, any scraps that I have left, and save them. For later on in a future video, I will show you some ideas of what you can do with leftover scraps of water-soluble stabilizer. And now that we have our little flower lace design completely cut out, all you need to do is immerse it in some warm water. Keep in mind that you don't want the water to be too hot, especially if you're working with the polyester thread. Can you see? I only dunk it in once and the stabilizer starts to like shrink away from the edges as it dissolves. And so you can sit here and kind of lightly massage it. You don't want to mess with the stitches too much. And it depends on how much of the stabilizer you want to remove. Sometimes for a small design like this, I will just like dunk it in two or three times and just bring it out without really messing with it too much with my hands. But if you feel like it's around the edges of the satin stitch there, you can totally just work with it until you get it to 
how you want it to be, you know, how much stabilizer you want in there or not. After that, I just set it on a little towel and just kind of pat it dry. Now when you're drying out the lace, what you definitely don't want to do is wring it out, like crunch it in your hands, because remember the stabilizer has been rinsed off, most of it at least, and it's just the thread on top and the bobbin thread and all the stitches that they took together that's holding this design together. So I typically will just pat it dry and I can tell that there's still some stabilizer in there because it's a little sticky to the touch, which is fine with me for these designs. If you want something a little soft, then go ahead and rinse all the stabilizer out completely. Then I will just let this dry on a flat surface somewhere. And once it completely dries out, you'll see that you'll end up with a really cute freestanding lace flower design like this one. Now I have another one that I uh, stitched out already here that needs to be dissolved, so I'm gonna get busy working on this one. But that's it for this video tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below. Share it across the different social media sites. If you're a member of some Facebook groups, maybe for beginner machine embroiderers, go ahead and feel free to share any of my machine embroidery tutorials with the folks in there. If they're newbies, they may appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.